friends, it is Sunday and this is Philly Philly and welcome to my kitchen. Today we are doing a boozy brunch. So I kind of wanted to dress for the occasion because it's so fun to go to brunch. It's honestly probably one of my favorite meals to go out to because it's casual, there's not a big schedule involved and there's all my favorite foods. I love eggs. Eggs are one of my favorite things. And if you have a cocktail, how nice is that? Just a nice little way to mix up a weekend. So here in the city, there are a lot of great brunch spots and we have gone to quite a few of them, um, but there's always more that we wanna try here in the city. But today we're gonna show you some boozy brunch ideas for you to do at home. So I'm very excited about the recipes I'm trying. The boozy part, will be involving espresso martinis. They have definitely been having a moment here in the city, so I don't know if you've been seeing them on cocktail menus where you are, but I will say, for me personally, if I see it on a cocktail menu when we are going out to dinner, I'm not ordering it because I'll be up all night. So, um, unless I can be assured that they're making decaf espresso martinis, which I don't know if they do that, so, um, so I'm excited because brunch to me is a great time to have an espresso martini. Maybe you have one and then you have some coffee afterwards, right? So there's lots of options. And our son, Matthew, loves espresso martinis. So I'm very excited to finally try one um, and make a few different versions. And then you can see which one that you like the best. So that will be happening after we get our star attraction in the oven, and that is a quiche. I know Archie has been wanting me to make quiche. He is the prized quiche maker on Foodie Twitter. So if you are not on Twitter, there is a wonderful foodie community there. Um, so check it out. Uh, but I, you can also find me on Instagram and of course here on YouTube. I love to share the different things. Yeah, Barbara. Let's see, okay. Catherine, Archie. Good. Wonderful, thanks Hubs. So good morning, Barbara. Good morning, Kathy and Archie. So wonderful to, um, to have you here on the stream. Archie, I was just talking about you that you've been wanting me to do a quiche. And this quiche caught my eye for a couple of reasons. One, who does not love some hash browns in the morning? And also, my sister's gluten-free, and so this would be a quiche that she'd be able to eat the crust, which is great. Um, I know you can make a pastry crust with uh, gluten-free flour, but this one is naturally gluten-free. So I thought that was a good one to try. And so actually, I'm going to get started with that portion, and we will be making cocktails. We'll be trying the different espresso martinis while our quiche is cooking. But let me catch you up to speed of what I did earlier today. So I got the quiche recipe, by the way, um, from Spoon Fork Bacon, and they are on all of the social media. So you can find them on Twitter. You can also find them um, on Instagram and on YouTube. And that was the recipe that I uh, that caught my eye. They made a version that had bacon, cheddar, and chives. I mean, what is not to love about that? But I wanted to put an Italian spin on it, so I'll tell you more about that in a minute. But one of the things that's important to do is to get the crust made ahead of time and to freeze it before it goes in the oven to par-bake. So um, earlier today, I mixed together, let me show you. I just used, now you can use frozen shredded hash browns or I, we have here in the States, this kind from Simply Potatoes. I am not paid to show this by the way, but it's shredded hash browns. And what's nice about it is that they are already shredded. And one of the issues that you have if you use the frozen hash browns is you have to make sure that you get all of the water out of them. So you need to defrost them get all of the water out of them so that they are not going to um, inhibit how the crust is going to form. And what's nice about this one is that they are already, Hubs is getting his Diet Coke, they are already um, shredded and they're fairly dry. I did put a paper towel on them just a little bit, but they did not need to be squeezed. Um, so you use, and this is, I think, 20 ounces. And then you add, let me get my recipe back to it. Then you're gonna add a half cup of cheese. She does cheddar. I'm doing today fontina, mozzarella, and parm. Let me actually show you that. I mixed that together. Give Diaz, Eugenia. It. Hey Diaz, hey Eugenia, welcome to the stream. So I mixed in a bowl. I shredded fontina, mozzarella, and parmesan. Mix that together. I used half a cup with the crust, and I saved the rest of it to be used with our quiche once we, once we mix it. 
So I front. Just, I just have to prove this to Archie. <laughs> so I don't know if you know that about hubs, but actually, will you show the ornament that would prove it um, even further? So hubs is a it Diet is. Coke lover of that beverage. He has at least one a day. It is one of his um, addictions. He would freely say that. And so we always have plentiful in our fridge. And in fact, he is so much so a Diet Coke fan that Santa left this ornament on his stocking one year. So show this. So yes. So we did get the tree um, all decorated. I'll show it to you. If you help me remember, I'll show it to you before the end of the stream. We actually have the lights off because the lights create heat. And being that I started late, and again, my apologies for starting late, there just was so much to prep for this. Um, and in any event, I appreciate your patience. So, but let me just real quick go to the crust. So we've got 20 ounces of hash browns. We've got a half cup of cheese. I chose Fontina, Parmesan, and mozzarella. And then a half teaspoon of salt and a quarter teaspoon of pepper. I showed the pictures on Twitter. And actually, I think also um, in YouTube, and I, I think I even showed them on Instagram, of my prep beforehand, and it's in the freezer. So before we, before I dive into the chat and catch up with you all, I just want to get it in to, um, to par cook. It's going to par cook, let me look at my recipe, um, for, and thank you again, spoon fork bacon, for 15 minutes at 425 degrees. Mine has been preheating. Let me get and show you the frozen formation. You should freeze for at least an hour. You can freeze it longer. Can you close that for me? Thank you. So there is my frozen, um, it has not been cooked yet, but we're gonna now put it in the oven and cook it for, ooh, that is warm for 15 minutes. You know why it's warm? Because it's on. Because it's an oven. It's oven, thanks hubs. That was helpful, that's helpful to say real smart ass things when your wife is a little bit stressed because she's like. Matthew's but, on. Hey, Matthew, welcome to the stream. Oh, you've got some delicious quiches. Porcini quiche, porcini fettuccine soup. Qu oh my gosh, you, so I, are you making some porcini, my friend Matthew? So let me dive back into our chat and see what everyone's saying. Yes. By the way. <laughs> yes. Archie, I, I like Coke Zero also. He said he converted to Coke Zero oh, okay. from Diet Coke. So the Coke Zero actually, and I agree with tastes it, like tastes, tastes, tastes like regular um, with sugar Coke. The only reason I choose Diet Coke over Coke Zero is because, my, so I think my first foray into Diet Coke was my mom. My mom used to always buy diet sodas. Don't, no one has to go into the chemicals and all that. That's just <laughs> what it was. Um, but in any event, and I developed a taste for it. So then when Coke Zero came out, I actually prefer Diet Coke because it's what I was used to. So if I do have a Diet Coke, um, or if I do want a soda like that, um, when a dark soda, I will get a Diet Coke. And my favorite place, by the way, to get a Diet Coke is at McDonald's because, and there's been studies done on this, the way they make, or not make, the way they serve their Diet Coke is top notch and it does taste better there. And they actually did studies, which cracks me up. Don't you think that's hysterical that they did studies on why it tastes better at McDonald's? So anyways, and that with some French fries are really good. But let's see back at the chat. He so says Eugenia it's less gassy. It's less, yes. Eugenia says, I like the dried hash browns from Idaho. They're a great pantry staple. That's good to know. I'll have to look for them. Thank you, Eugenia. And let's see what else. Archie says, I'm sitting, glad I'm sitting down, or else the shock of hubs being out of bed before midday would have bored me. <laughs> You're very funny. I love that. And Eugenia doesn't drink diet soda. I actually, I think that's great that you don't, Eugenia. Definitely. Um, it's bad for you. It's bad for you. But I actually, and hubs would agree, I actually don't drink much soda, period. You don't. Um, no. I'm mostly a water girl. And uh, if I want something at a restaurant, typically, unless it's McDonald's and I want the diet, the diet soda, or it's pizza. I like a Diet Coke with pizza if I'm not having a beer Come with kidding. it. You like beer with pizza. Right, but if it was at lunch, I would never have a beer just at lunch with, <laughs> you know, like there's times you have pizza, you know, that you're, that you're not gonna have a, have a beer anyways. He's the one that would never not have a beer with pizza, even if it was lunchtime. But um, back to what Eugenia was saying, um, a lot of times I'll have iced tea, but that's more in the summertime where I crave iced tea. So let me just see here. Um, 
I think that's great though, Eugenia. Definitely, I will aspire to that. And uh, let's see what everyone else is saying. Diet Coke seems weak now after heavily doing Coke Zero. I see that. Excellent. Coke tastes better from McD's. Yes, because they chill the syrup and the design of, let me see what you said, um, the design of ice and straw. Yeah, it's really, it's everything, Eugenia. And I love a Diet Coke from McDonald's. So, and by the way, anyone else who's joining us, welcome to the stream. Um, welcome I to stream. the Diet Coke conversation. I, thank you for... Um, you know, braving through our Diet Coke conversation. It is a live stream, so you never kind of know where the conversation's gonna go. Um, I do live streams, I try to do live streams once a week, um, each, each week during the month. My schedule is attached not only to my YouTube page, but it's also on my social media. And please don't forget to like and subscribe. So let's get to, so our hash browns, and I forgot, to, no I didn't, oh, I, almost, I almost thought I forgot to put the timer. Wow, I did though, okay. So while our um, hash brown um, crust is par baking, let me talk about the rest of the ingredients. So we are going to be in just a minute sauteing up some butter with some shallots that I'm going to mince in just a second. And we're going to mix it with some eggs and um, cream. And you, so in her recipe, uh, which I did link below, she again used bacon, cheddar, and sh um, not shallots, uh, onion and chives, but I'm going to give it a little bit of Italian twist. So earlier today, um, I also browned up some pancetta. So I need to put actually this pancetta on a paper towel so it can drain some of the lovely flavor that's there. And what I'm going to do instead of using butter um, in my pan is I'm going to actually fry up my shallots and the pancetta because like why not keep that flavor there now I think with the bacon sometimes you might have bacon left over which makes a great quiche but to me even if I was doing bacon I would fry up those onions in the bacon fat because that just kind of adds to the flavor so I'm going to get out a shallot actually would you bring out the carton of eggs that is lighter so it's our older carton of eggs because that's the one we're going to be using first we go so there's our pancetta I'm gonna save this and get this back warming up for our shallots let me get our shallots you could use onion honestly you can use whatever you have get that back up and I'm going to chop some shallots the other thing when we chopping and you can see I'm running late because I don't even have my cutting board out oh my goodness there just was I wanted to make sure and include all the links below for the martinis we'll be making and for um, the quiche we're making. So we have our eggs set there. I'm going to get out a shallot. All right. Hubs is very excited about these martinis, aren't you, babe? Yeah, kind of. Really? So Archie... Um, he didn't sound like he was excited. Uh, I'm a no, little no, bit sad I'm, about that. Yeah, no, no, I'm good. I'm he's not excited. He just excited. said he's good. You're somewhat excited? Yeah. Hmm. So I have my shallot. What were you going to say? <laughs> I so think Hubs Archie, might not get any martinis tonight, today. Archie, not tonight. Archie is uh, concerned with how you say shallot. And I wish, that's why I wish <laughs> we had sound, because I don't know how you say shallot. So somehow, you know what, Archie? Send me, uh, make sure you send me a message that you do with your voice message with shallot so that I can hear how you say shallot, because then I'm sure I'll get a giggle out of it. I don't know that I've noticed how anyone else says shallot. What do you think? Well, he has a... I know he has an accent, but I'm no, trying no, to no. think... No, no, no. He has oh. it on here of how to pronounce it. Shallot. Is it shallot? Shall shallot. So it's a different shall emphasis. Shallot. I, I don't know. So sh is the emphasis on the aughts? Because I'm, as a reading teacher, we're <laughs> all about phonics. And so phonetically in America, it would be shallots, which the emphasis would be on the shall part, and we also say shall, like that's how we pronounce S-H, we don't say shall here. So that's probably part of the difference, shallots. Barbara Maybe said it's... you're saying it right. <laughs> Thanks, Barb. Barb, get him in line. All right, so I'm trying to break off one of these little parts of the shallot so I don't have to go into the whole thing. And he it's not says working it's... and I'm getting impatient, so I'm just gonna start slicing. He says it's ots. Ots. 
Otz is emphasized. Don't Shalops. read. Don't read a couple of things up that he said. <laughs> well, in any event, I do love sh shallots because they just add a really nice flavor um, to things. So I'm just going to mince these quick and get them in the pan, which I got heated back up. Let me make sure. Ah, get a little more heat going on that. And we're just going to get a little caramelization on this. Um, I think she caramelizes her onions for like a true caramelization. Actually not true because it would take longer than 15 minutes. I am looking to get a little bit of color on these. Color in my book is flavor. I don't need these to just be melted. They just, I actually want to get them a little bit crispy, a little bit brown. That sounds delightful. So I have probably here about a quarter cup of shallots. So let me get that heat going. So Catherine says that the emphasis is on the second syllable. Shallots. <laughs> so that would be... Just say shallots for you right I just now. say shallots. <laughs> <laughs> but um, potato, patata, tomato, tomato, right? I mean, that's how... And it all... And the, the whole world, it makes the whole world go round. Actually, and we've talked about this here on here um, on the stream. I love... Oops! You can tell I'm getting a little nervous still because I'm dropping shallots. And, um, but you can tell that uh, I, too, I love all the accents. And as I've said, I wish I had a more pleasing accent. I don't think that my particular one is you have very an accent? pleasing. Well, it's, people would say, if, I, if people from the South would say I have an accent, because I don't have a Southern accent. So, you all right. You y'all a lot. Yeah, but that's not because I'm Southern. It's just because I like, I like y'all. I like that. All right, I'm going to get these in and get these a little crispy. Just get those going. I'm going to put a little salt and pepper here. And I'll tell you about the rest of the ingredients. So let me just get these going. I have a little fresh black pepper from another recipe. There we go. Get those going. Again, I would use, for me, I would use the, um, the pancetta grease because it just, to me, has great flavor. The other thing I want to make sure I get ready is parsley. So she used chives, but for mine, I'm going to use Italian flat leaf parsley. So let me get out the parsley and get it rinsed real quick. The cheese is in here. So the cheeses are going, um, they're a mix of fontina. And, and, and I will tell you, part of how I cook is I do not like to waste anything. So I had leftover fontina, and I also had leftover mozzarella. So when I saw the recipe, I thought right away that I'm going to use my cheeses. Like, why would I not use them? That's a great, you know, I think when we can be creative with ingredients so that we can use up what we have, it's just a much more responsible way to cook. So, so we will be using some fontina. I think it's about, it's probably about, two-fifths fontina, two-fifths mozzarella, and then one-fifth parmesan. Um, and then I'm going to top it with some, um, some more parsley, so I'll, I'll cut some extra, some fresh grated parmesan, and a little drizzle of olive oil. Because it's brunch, right? And I can. So there, there's... there's oh no, are we still on shallots? Well, there's conversations about pronunciations. Okay. And Catherine says, don't get me started on English versus American pronunciation. <laughs> herbs, oregano, you know. Oh, and, yes. Uh, Archie wants me to say herbs and, like and, Martha Stewart does. And Archie says, herbs without the H stresses me out hugely. <laughs> well, you know what then, Arch? I'm actually even happy to say herbs then because if I can stress you out a little bit, that's actually going to be my jam right now. And then Catherine says, British mispronounce things just to be difficult. <laughs> Well, it all is wonderful in my book, and that's not me just being the sunshine. I really do, I really do enjoy, you know, how everyone's take on it is. Okay, so I have got definitely more than a tablespoon of parsley. We will be using a tablespoon to put into our egg mixture in our custard, so to speak. So I've got my pancetta ready, I have my parsley ready, my shallots are getting nicely browned. You just turn that down just a little bit. They're even smoking a little bit. We got some flavor going on there. And then let's get our mixture ready because our um, crust is gonna come out of the oven and it will need to cool a tad. So I'm not in a rush right now, but let me get my eggs out. We are gonna need six large eggs for this occasion. 
Let me pick some. One, two, three, four, five, six. There we go. And if you want to put those back, darling, that would be great. Thank you. All right, so we put our eggs back. Let me get a nice bowl to do all of our mixing in. Oh, would you get out the whole milk and the heavy cream? Thank you much. So we've got whole milk. Get. Oh, Archie, I'm feeling saucy, so I think I'm going to use the rainbow whisk for this occasion, my friend. All right, so we've got some heavy cream and some whole milk. I'm going to actually take off. This is fresh and brand new, so I'm going to take this off. I don't always keep heavy cream in my fridge, but it is nice to have, especially around the holidays, to give a splash of things to make things creamy. And you never know when I might want to mix up some of that no-churn ice cream, which is absolutely delightful. So I think these are ready. They've got nice brown. So let me show you. They just have a nice brown to them. Some good flavor there. So my shallots. I'm going to put those with my pancetta because they're going to go in our ingredients. Just let them cool a little bit. And we'll start getting these eggs cracking. Right, babe? Yep. Yes, I'm going to let this cool over there. Where are you going to cook the eggs in? Oh, well, it's going in the... Oh, yeah, right, right, right. I'm sorry. <laughs> Eggs are going to go in that um, par-baked crust in just a minute. How much time do we have left? Ooh, just 30, very, very shortly. So let me start cracking. So let's see here. So one thing I've, as a cook, I've always, you know, wanted, and this goes back to my Little House in the Prairie days when um, Mama Ingalls, oh shush, when Mama no, Ingalls no, no. was, let me, just, happy about let me just whisk. finish my story. When Mama Ingalls was um, learning how to be a cook at the inn and she had to learn how to crack eggs with one hand. And I've kind of felt like as a home cook, I just don't need to know how to do that. Now, if you're at a restaurant where it goes quicker, maybe, but for me, this is just fine. So what did I miss? He's not happy about the rainbow whisk. He's not. Well, of course he isn't. That's why I did it. I did it for a fact. Can you open up the trash, babe, so I can get these? tossed. These are farm fresh eggs from a local uh, farm near here that I get from my market. And of course, Archie, they are not as fresh as from your girls. So, but I know you would use farm fresh eggs uh, from your girls in this quiche. Archie, I have a question for you. What is, I have two, uh, two questions. One, what is your favorite quiche that you've made and what is your go-to, which may not always be your favorite, just maybe it's your go-to, you know, one that you just tend to make the most. But what is your favorite quiche you've made? Because you've made some lovely quiches. All right, I'm going to get this out and show you. So you can see it doesn't look that much different. It's just slightly brown around the edges, but it's enabled the potatoes to get a little tender. I'm going to let this sit over here. And I'm going to turn off the timer, and I'm also going to put the temperature to 375, which is going to be the ultimate temperature it's going to cook at. I can't the, imagine this takes that long to cook, right? About half hour. Oh, really? And then it's got to sit. He's going to hate this part. That's what we're doing the drinks after I get it in. Then it's got to sit for about 10 minutes. And why does quiche have to sit, my friends? I know you all know why. Because it helps it set and then stay together. Because if you cut a quiche too soon, it just, you're gonna lose the texture you're shooting for, everything you've worked hard to do. So Hubs, this is gonna be a very challenging time for him. But um, Hubs, if we finish trying the cocktails early, I, if I have a chance, I'd like to mix up a quick salad. I love having quiche, a salad on the side of quiche. So let's see what Archie said. Um, caramelized onion and Stilton. Um, is the fave you make, and the best you've eaten is crab, salmon, and asparagus in France. Well, can I just say, you saying the crab, um, wait, I just lost it. The crab, salmon, and asparagus in France just makes my heart go, oh, because that would be delightful to not, not only have a, an amazing quiche like that, Archie, but to be in France eating it, oh, lovely. Eugenia makes bacon, cheese, and spinach quiche. Oh, that sounds delicious, Eugenia. And actually, I would love to know Kathy and DS and Matthew um, and Barb, like, are there certain yeah. quiches that are your go-tos when you order them or when you make them yourself? So that's interesting. So Archie says go-to go for Amy's uh, lunchbox is cheddar, onion, and bacon. Yeah. So that would be, so the spoon and fork bacon, the original recipe has that. So that's, that's what's in it. Now, again, we're just doing a little different. 
So um, I've got my eggs, my six eggs here, and to them I'm going to add a half cup cream or whole milk. Well, I decided what I wanted to do was do both. It would save us just a little bit on fat. I do love a, whole, a full cream quiche. There is something so, so tender, but I know Hubs is going to glare at me if I put, um, have it all be cream, because we do try to, you know, you know, be good. So we, but we aren't, and you could just do whole milk, but we're going to splurge a little bit. So I'm going to do yeah. half and half. If that's good. And actually that is, I think what half and half is, it's half cream and half milk. So let me get my measuring cup. So you could have just bought half and half. Yeah, but, but I like to have cream because cream can, cream just has lots of um, uses. And especially in the holidays, I thought that would be a great thing to have handy. Cream you can also use on a baked good, you can brush it on top and it helps get it a brown, uh, glossy coating. So, so here I have my cup, my half cup measure. I'm going to go halfway and I'm going to do a quarter of each. You ever do that with cookies? What? Um, I haven't, but I, I know I've done it in recipes. I'm trying to think, I know I've done it with sweet, um, a sweeter uh, biscuit. I remember I made those once, one year for Valentine's I Day, did. I did them in hearts yep. and you brush them. Oh, and I brush, a little cream with some egg on my scones that I make. Oh, yeah. We haven't had those in a long so time. Good. I know. We've not had them in way Did too long. Did you make that for them? For I've made it. Yeah, I've made my blueberry, my lemon oh, blueberry scones, God, which are so delicious. So, good. so, Hubs, would you put this away for me, please? So, here I have a half a cup mixed of um, heavy cream and milk. And I'm just going to pour that in. And she said, whip, uh, whisk, whip it with your whisk. <laughs> until it's light and fluffy. So I'm just gonna get that going. And meanwhile, my crust can cool a little bit. If you wanna bring the cheese over here, that would be great, that bowl of cheese. So I just think these flavors will, will be really nice. So <laughs> Archie, you're gonna, have, you're gonna have your way. This is great for a nonstick pan, but it does not make a great whisk. Um, <laughs> it is just not, sturdy enough for how I want to whip this. So I'm gonna get one of my favorite whisks. There we go. It was just too flimsy. So I just wanna get this going. Yes, I agree, Eugenia, I definitely do. I think it's a good thing to have. Okay, so just wanted to get that nice and light. Um, and by the way, Archie, the one that you talked about that you make, and I'm sure you have, oh, mascarpone and quiche. I love, yes, mascarpone is a very wonderful ingredient. Um, and I use mascarpone as a substitute for heavy cream at times, just because it melts so, so nicely. Um, and Barb likes spinach, Vidalia onion, spinach, and Gruyere quiche. Well, oh, that sounds delightful. Oh, this is all good. And Archie, what I wanted to ask was, have you done a video with your caramelized onion and Stilton? And it, forgive me if you haven't, I've forgotten, but I also forget everything, right? But, um, but I would love to know that. Three cheers for the normal whisk. Ah, just to make your day. All right, so friends, and then what we're gonna do is we're just gonna add a, about a tablespoon of our parsley. We're going to add our pancetta and our onions. We're going to add our cheese, which may be over a cup of cheese, but you know you measure cheese with your heart. And I'm going to also get some fresh pepper and some salt in there. We do have salt in the cheese. And of course, this is stuff that I've also recently cracked. So get a little pepper in there. But I do want to add just a tad more salt just to make sure it's seasoned well. So a nice healthy pinch, there we go. Excellent. And let's mix this and let's get it in our crust and get this going so we can make some espresso martinis. So friends, if you are just joining us, welcome to the stream. I'm making um, inspired and adapted from the recipe by Spoon Fork Bacon. I am making a Fontina mozzarella parmesan pancetta parsley quiche on a hash brown crust. So we have mixed this together and let's put this in the pan. Should, yeah. I can touch it. So this is the part that makes me nervous because one thing she says multiple times is you just have to make sure that every hole has been covered. Like you can't have any holes or it'll 
it'll bleed through. So I'm a little nervous. In fact, I feel like maybe, maybe I need to just put a pan underneath just to make sure. This is gonna be the most nerve-wracking part of the stream. And I'll probably put this under again just in case. So this is a spring form pan. Um, you could just do it in a regular pan. It just, I, you know, it'll, it'll come out nicer. And wait till you see the crust. I hope my crust looks like hers because hers looked delightful. All right, so here is the moment of truth. Fingers crossed, y'all. Y'all. All right. Now, I'm going to also kind of distribute this so that things seem even, cheese and pancetta and everything wise. Looks like a <gasps> No, it's coming out. Oh, it's coming out right there. Okay, I'm getting it in. Oh, shucks. Go, 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 go. This way? Nope, there, thank you. No, oh, no, friends, I have a hole. Oh, <laughs> she didn't say what to do if there's a hole. Like, Need I don't some, know what to do. Some tape? I know. <laughs> I'm just hoping it'll stop at some point. <laughs> oh no! Well, this is what live cooking is all about, right? So I'm gonna bring you over and show you this little hole. Oh no, I thought we were good until all of a sudden. Oh, That's classic. oh my goodness. Oh my goodness. Oh dear, so let me show you what we got here. Okay, you see the runnage there? Do you see the runnage? Oh, no. Well, I think we have to stop it. Well, I don't know how to stop it because I don't know exactly where the hole is. I just know it's over on that side. So, like, do you know what I'm saying? Like, and she, it's funny. In her description, she talks about that as, like, the most important thing. And honestly, I was so OCD about, like, just, like, oh, okay, trying to make sure that anything that looked like it was open was closed. And I really thought I had it. Oh, dear. I'm just hoping it's going to cook. <laughs> we might have a quite thin quiche. It is getting bigger. Oh no, babe. <laughs> All right, let's take it out and we can scoop it back in. But we don't know how to stop it. We'll, we'll just, can we? Uh... We don't know how to stop it, sweetie. Like, that's the problem. There's no way to stop it. Any suggestions, y'all? Any suggestions? Springform Pams don't like me. Pack it with some. Bread, but bread, like I don't I no, say. but I don't know where to pack it. Arch, you know what I'm saying? No, like, like on the outside, like on underneath. Yeah, yeah, like on the outside. That's that's what I was thinking too. Okay. Oh dear. All right, friends. This is this is good. We're gonna try it. Oh my lord. Oh, <laughs> you might want to my. scoop it back in. Well, I would have to, obviously. <laughs> All right. So I need the other. Nope. I need the other pan. I need the other pan. I need that other big pan. Okay. So we have some fresh potato bread so it's super squishy um, and it's it definitely seems like it was over here I, I still don't know quite how we're gonna do this okay wait wait um, okay I, you're gonna it's gonna be hot right no this is fine okay can't you can touch that can't you touch that isn't that fine yeah okay lift up as high as you can it's like, right there right right um, on the edge Takes a village, y'all. Okay, I'm gonna go over to the other one. Watch out. Okay. No, no, I'm coming to you, babe. Right. I'm coming to you. Okay, now. All I think, right. I think okay. tape would have been better. Well, tape is plastic, so that would be a terrible idea. So, okay. You take this, hold this, you're gonna put it back down here. Put it back down. Okay. There we go. Oh, look at that. Perfect. Can you get my spatula? Yep. Right there. Nope. <laughs> All right, we're going to put this egg back in there. It's going to be a little bit weird because some of it kind of cooked, but what are you going to do, right? Tell you what, I'm eating, that, I'm eating that bread when it comes out. All right. Oh, friends, here we go. Problem solving on the fly. Home cook version. <laughs> Let's get it back in the oven. All right, so I'm going to get it back in the up. oven. Oh, it's coming out another spot. I'm going to get bread. More bread. More bread. More bread. That, that's barely coming out. I know. I'm still getting some bread there. Why not? Ugh. Okay, open. Let's get this guy cooking. <laughs> so my advice to you, if you make this, oh, it's still coming out there. Let me that's get a little more bread. You pushed it down so hard. Sweetie, shush. You did. You pushed it down so okay. hard. Okay. Do you think that's helpful when Hubs is actually 
criticizing when I'm, when I'm trying to fix the problem. Friends, do you think that's good? Is that good for his general health? I'm right. just wondering. Got it? OK. Yeah. So my advice to you, if you try this recipe, and again, she talks about it. This, was, this is not a secret. She talks about, I would, you might as well, would you want to do this, babe? Yeah. Um, so is I, I, I'm totally serious that I would actually. You need those in? Yeah, those are later. I would actually have some very soft bread. I just need the, um, this. I would have some very soft bread What's in case that happens. Just something that you could. Um, it was a good recovery. And thanks for the idea. I actually, I was kind of like, the, and he knows it's about me. When this is not a good thing, but when problems, how would you describe this? When problems happen, I'm very much the deer in headlights kind of person. I react that way, don't I, babe? No comment. So, <laughs> I mean, I'm being totally honest. When when things happen. You know, now if it involves one of my kids, I actually think a lot quicker on my feet. But like when it's just with with something I'm doing, I really tend to be do the deer in headlights, and that's exactly what y'all saw. So, ta-da! <laughs> but um, thank you for that idea. That was that was a good idea. That was like the. Uh, oh my goodness! Remember the bed and breakfast when you stuck the thing in the ceiling fan and you just <laughs> were freaking out and didn't know what to but do. But wait, how did that happen? So I don't remember. Oh, I know. We went to, this was years ago, like probably, I bet you it was like 20 years ago. And I walk out and I'm just like, turn off the fan. So we were at this lovely bed and breakfast and it had this canopy bed. It was just, I mean, the whole place was just oozed like frilly and like, um, it was just very, it was very pretty, right? It was, it was very much for women. It was just a very pretty inn. And we go there and I turn on the fan because I'm, even back then, I'm always warm. So I go to turn on the fan, and there was like some um, garland or something near it, and it whipped it up, and it started going, like whipping this garland, and I just went, oh no, and I froze, which is so me. But you screamed. And I screamed, and he like comes out, times. and he just sees like this thing whipping, and he goes, turn it off, and I'm like, <laughs> oh, <yeah>. oh, okay. <laughs> so... That is classic me. All right, now I definitely need a cocktail. So, uh, oh my goodness. Yeah, let's see how it's doing. Yeah, it's doing good. Okay. We might just have some real eggy bread left. Um, We're gonna have some really, really burnt bread. Because I will say bread does absorb, so. Oh my goodness. Well, you know what? I'm glad to try this for you and show. And again, I was being so careful. The hash browns will be good. I just was being so stinking careful. Ugh. So that's the only thing is just make sure you have something that you can sop up um, the issue with. Okay, let's get to these espresso martinis. So we are making, um, oh, thank you. Thank you, Archie. He did, Archie says, Archie goes, did he say tape? I was joking. I'm just saying, like. Rubber cement? Yeah, what am I going to do? What am I going to do? Um, no, I put the parsley. I put the parsley in um, when I mixed it together, but I saved some because I want to sprinkle some on top because I love a little fresh green on top. So, but thank you for checking, Eugenia. That was awesome. Um, my advice to hubs for your health after the stream is back off. <laughs> and I love it. Kathy says thank you, Kathy. <laughs> my heart to you. She goes. She says. My, oh wait. She says never expect a drama like this. That's like my kitchen. Hey, you know. We all have to stick together because if anyone thinks that there's never drama in a kitchen, you are totally wrong. So this goes to anyone watching that maybe isn't chatting or maybe you're watching this later. Don't get derailed by the mistakes. Honestly, they just, they just happen and just problem solve. Stay out of the deer, deer in headlights, like break off from that and just start problem solving. And at the end, even mistakes taste you know, darn yummy, so which is good. Um, Oh, Eugenia, no, no. She says, my half and half is curdled. Now I am coffee deficient. There's nothing worse than when that stuff curdles. Uh, we're, it's, it's, it's formed up now, oh, so it's good. Oh, Archie, you are the best, even though you give me a lot of, a lot of uh, trouble, but I love the trouble. Did you hear what um, I said, though? It's formed up. So it's formed it's, up? Yeah, yeah I am a little worried, though, that it... No, there's a little egg coming out the other side. <laughs> this is going to be fun. Okay, to the martinis.
All right, let's so, do it. So one of the first things I'm going to do right now is because for the three we're making, we're going to need espresso. You don't want it to be piping hot, but they, none of them said put it in to chill. So if you think about it, when you have liquor, it's warm. Like most liquor does not go in the fridge. I mean, some do to keep it nicer. So just room temperature is fine. So I'm going to get the espresso done right away. We will need three shots. So I'm going to make three shots of espresso. And I'm telling you all, we don't have a fancy espresso maker. I'm just doing, this is actually a knockoff that my dear son, Manny, found for me. A knockoff um, Nespresso maker that he found me on Amazon. Because what had happened was, and by the way, I am going to use these, which are, you don't, I mean, choose whichever espresso you want. I'm going to use the dark ones because I just, I like, we both like, like that deep, dark flavor. So these are actually from our favorite. I, I, so we, we love a lot of different espresso. We love Illy, but we also love Pete's. Pete's espresso is quite nice. So these are those, these little pods that um, you can use in espresso makers. We used to have the Virtuo, the Virtuo model, and, um, and we just weren't as happy with the espresso there. And then some of the other makers make these little ones for their original line. So that's what we're using. So let me get my little espresso cup under. Whoops. There we go. I'm a little bit frazzled right now, not going to lie. So we're going to get three of these going. Um, and I think I should be able to fit two shots in one cup. Because basically, then I, I went down the rabbit hole of how much espresso is one shot, and it should just be one ounce. So we well, shall if see. It runs over, just put some bread underneath it. I might not let him have any quiche. <laughs> I might not let him have a martini. I might drink all three by myself. No, that would be a problem. That would not be a good choice. All right, so I do want these to cool off, so I'm going to kind of keep transferring these. So we have one shot. I'm going to put my other one in this one. This will be a good one to put in. Archie, hey, Archie a, doesn't a like shot my... Class. And why do we have this one? This is Wisconsin. Not, not, no offense, Wisconsin, but why do we have a Wisconsin? Why? Oh, uh, long story. That Just a was, friend, one of your friends, right? One of my friends who is from Wisconsin, knowing okay. that I'm not a Wisconsin So fan, representing Wisconsin to... here, friends. All right. There we go. And our third shot. Okay. So the other ingredients we will need I can't are. The bread hasn't gotten more brown. We'll need Kahlua. Right. We will need vodka, and we will need a little bit of Bailey's, and we do have just a little bit of Bailey's left right now. Um, and so the three that we're making is first we're going to make a classic espresso martini. Um, and as I said before, like these are just, we've just been seeing them everywhere in the menu. They've been very popular, at least here in the city. So I don't know if you've been seeing them on dinner places by you. So please feel free to let me know in the chat. Archie, are you seeing this in England a lot? I'm just curious. All right. So these have got to cool. So I'm going to let them cool down. It's the first time I've ever wanted my coffee to cool. It's kind of funny. It's weird to be in that, that situation. Let me put these away. So we're going to make uh, a classic one, which will just consist, and I have all these down below, which I got the classic one from Kahlua, actually, because you can use a, a couple different things in your espresso martinis. There actually is, and I want to say, babe, that it's maybe Godiva that makes it. Um, there's someone that makes an actual espresso liqueur. But it was quite expensive, and um, so we decide on Kahlua, because a lot of them have Kahlua in them. So it's really whatever coffee liqueur that you would like. Oh, your mom's on. Oh, hey. Hey, mom. No, no, it's in the oven. It's in the oven, mom. So, um, so yeah. So And there was a little bit of a mishap of um, the... Um, <laughs> it was, you're supposed to make sure that... All of the hash brown, um, you know, you make sure there's no holes, and I did my very best, and yet there was a hole. So that was fun. You missed, you might want to rewind later and see the whole, um, the whole, <laughs> no pun intended, um, panic. problem, panic and problem solving <laughs> that ensued. So, so definite um, must see TV. But um, so we're going to use Kahlua, and which is, and also, I, as you can say, I made hubs. I made hubs get the small bottle. You know, he likes to have his one that's the best value. I'm like, we do not need a big 
bottle of Kahlua. So, um, so yes, and I didn't realize, I will tell you, did you realize that Kahlua is actually rum and coffee liqueur? What's that? Yes. I, I never knew that. Did y'all know that? I just knew it was a coffee liqueur. I didn't know it was considered rum and so coffee. So that's interesting. What's that? I've never had it. Um, Archie says Kahlua and Diet I didn't, Coke. I, I, didn't put the, <laughs> I didn't put the timer on. <laughs> I was a little frazzled mom, so I didn't put the timer on. I did now. I just, I just now did. I know, so, but I'm. you're okay. Okay, I'll change it to 20 minutes because it's going to be 25 to 30. There's no way we spent 10 minutes doing that. In my opinion. I just don't want it to be undone. So I'll check in 20 But he minutes. said Kahlua and Diet Coke. Is really? Good. Really? I just well, had that's, a Diet Coke. Well, that's perfect. No, well, we're going to have plenty. So <laughs> you don't need to make, he does not need to make another drink. But he will try it. You know oh. he will. So um, I just want to smell it. I love the smell of Kahlua. Oh, it's just so yummy smelling. All right. So our first one will just be vodka. And I'm just taking time to let this cool down a little bit. Um, espresso and um, Kahlua, and it'll be shaken over ice. By the way, one thing they talk about having, and let me just do a quick check and see if I have them, and I don't think I do, nope, I don't, um, is if you have any whole coffee beans, they make a nice um, embellishment on top, and you put three, and it means, it's, um, it means three things. Is it like live, love, laugh, or it's, prosperity or something like that. So if you make them, and if you're prepared more than Philly Philly is, have your little whole coffee beans um, ready to go. So that'll be our first one. Our second one is from Everyday Cocktail, and it is a salted caramel espresso martini. So that really caught my eye. Now, don't worry that you've got to go and get salted caramel. Like we actually have a caramel sauce, but I knew the holidays were here. It's kind of like the cream. And so, Mama, you can see I've got some of this for when you guys come visit the holidays. Um, and some Smucker's salted caramel topping. So wouldn't that be great over some ice cream? So we do have some of this. And since I thought I wanted to have some anyway, I bought some salted caramel. But you don't have to. If you just have a caramel topping, all you can do is add a sprinkle of salt when you're making it. So just wanted to let you all know that. And that involves espresso, caramel, vodka, and Kahlua. And then the last one we're gonna do is the flat white espresso martini, which is from Bailey's. And so thank you Bailey's for that. Um, the Bailey's original, by the way. And it is Bailey's vodka and espresso. So we have all three we're gonna try. We're gonna okay. try the original first because we want to make sure, um, I'm just trying to take time because it's still kind of warm. That's all, I'm just, he's, he's, getting, he's getting anxious, friends. Let's, let's give him all prayers to calm down. Um, so we're gonna try the original first. Do you want to get out the, the glasses? Babe? Your job, if, if you so take it, is to, actually no, I would rather do it. No, I'm gonna take it, it's my job. I'm gonna take the pictures afterwards before we sip them. So they recommend, by the way, you could use a martini glass, but they actually recommend coupes because they said the coupe enables the foam that inevitably, we need just one, one more. Oh, yeah. <laughs> enables the foam which inevitably gets created to kind of, kind of stay in. I guess when you have the martini glass, it just kind of spreads out and so you don't get that visual of the foam in as nice a manner. So I guess that makes sense. Yeah, so that's what we're gonna do. Um, actually, can you get me a little plate because we're gonna be dipping our rim in the next one. And actually, could you open this? So I'm giving him stuff to do to help him be patient. And I wanna make sure I have my... Um, I'm like really a four-year-old. He is like a four-year-old. <laughs> <laughs> Y'all feel sorry for me now, don't ya? Okay, Let's and I'm gonna get... Keep four-year-old busy. I hope Santa will give us a, a better shot glass because I'm using my little Tupperware, no offense, Tupperware um, shot glass, but it really is a nice shot glass. And a plate, please. Yes, and a spoon, please. A little spoon. I'm giving him lots of jobs. Keeping him busy. Okay, so I'm going to save that for the next one. Why we can't get ourselves ready. All right. So we are, would you like to fill this with ice, please? I would fill it, <laughs> I'd fill it halfway because we wanted to get it chilled. I'm going to put the espresso in last because it is warm. Babe, 
There we go. So for this, it says one ounce Kahlua, one ounce vodka, one ounce espresso. I'm worried my coops are a little big for that. So I'm going to actually, for this recipe, double it. And I just won't pour. I'll only pour. We need to taste that. <laughs> oh, 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 oh. Mm. You know that one everywhere, don't you? No, I didn't. <laughs> How is it? Does it approve your taste test? That's pretty good. Is it pretty good? All right. So he could have waited till we put it on the dish and then used his finger, but you know, he's hubs and we expect that from him. All right. So back to this. So I'm going to put double just because I want to make sure I do have enough for a presentation. Um, so I might not pour all of it. Okay, babe. Hello. Yep. Okay. So I'm going to put in vodka Kahlua and my espresso shot. So you know what? You know what, babe? Can you make one more shot? I know what I'm going to do. One second, sweetie. Do me a favor. Uh -huh. Can you, um, one second, friends. I just want to get one more that's starting to cool. I just realized I don't want to use too much of the espresso, so I didn't have enough for my other recipe. See, I'm thinking that little mishap made me be totally on today. Wait, is that? No, that's yours. Oh, shucks. One second, friends. Here we go. All right. Here we go. Here we go. I'm with it. Kind of. Oh, okay. Okay. There you go. Do you know how to do it? Nope. Nope. You don't? Lift up. Put in. Nope. Nope. Side. Yep. Push down and press the little button. The little. Yes. That one. All right. Just let it go. You might need to press one more time sometimes. There we go. All right, so friends, I'm sorry, okay. I, I digress. So again, I'm doubling this for, can you put like just maybe three more ice cubes in because we're doubling it? Um, I'm doubling it just for my recipe because I just want to make sure we have enough for this. The other ones I will not be doubling. Perfect, thank you, babe. He's the best, isn't he the best? Okay, so we've got two ounces of vodka. I'm not patronizing, I'm, I'm actually complimenting you. I appreciate your flexibility, okay. So this I know will be too much, but I just want to make sure the half of it isn't too little. That's all. Okay, and we can pour the extra. So again, I'm doubling this. It's, it's basically a one-to-one -one ratio. I probably should have done one and a half. That would have been smarter, don't you think, sweetie? He's not listening. Well, no, I'm reading this. Um, Eugenia said that there's a Smith & Wesson cocktail. Ooh. It's Kahlua, vodka, and Coke with a bit of cream. Delicious. And then she said, later on, she says, I recommend limiting yourself oneself to two or oh. you may have regrets. I would totally agree with that. All right, so let's give her a shake. Archie's making, and remember, we want this to be frosty. Archie's making fun of my lack of kitchen ability. Now, I will say that because of this, um, this is going to be the least sweet one. So this is definitely the one that I think Hubs is going to enjoy more. Okay. Jeez. Here we go. So what, I'm sorry. Now, this is, is what's it? cool. One second. This is what's cool. Because look what happens. See how it separates? So that's why you use the coop. That's too. why I use the coop. So you see how you can see the foam on top? And if we had the whole beans, we'd put them on top. Or you could just put a little cinnamon or something. So can I have your phone so I can take a picture? Oh, this is beautiful. This is so pretty. Look at that. So the more it sits, actually, the better. Because look at the contrast. So what was Hubs this? is taking a long time. Tell Hubs to hurry, I'm, please. I'm trying to. But I can do that, babe. There you go. <laughs> He's so funny. So what's go back. Go back and entertain. Song and dance. Song and dance. So what was in this one? This was the... This is just the classic espresso so Kahlua, martini. So it's one ounce of Kahlua, one ounce of vodka, one ounce of espresso, right? Okay. It looks good. It is beautiful. I mean, it's I will very, say. Very it's a pretty stunning. Drink. It's like a, it's a striking. And that was good advice using the... Yes. The coupe. All right. Let's Would give this a try. Thank you. Just leave this here because I can use it. Okay. Uh, after. Okay, I'm going to try first. As you should. Oh, that's very nice. Very balanced. Um, I don't 
typically like a, a super sweet drink. I do know the next ones we'll make will be sweeter, but to me they're more desserty. That's pretty good. I and mean, that just that is really it's just it's like again coffee. equal parts. So whatever coffee liqueur you're using, and frankly, I think you could mix it up. I think you could use a hazelnut liqueur there. I think you could wow. use um, an amaretto. Don't you think an amaretto would be lovely mm -hmm. that's in there? Really, so, that's really good. So I think depending if you can get espresso and vodka, which a lot of people have vodka, and just I would I would definitely be creative with the liqueur you'd use. I'll probably goose up the vodka. That a little is bit. so good. Mmm, very nice, very coffee-y, which is, so for mom, you would not like this, um, because, <laughs> because she does not like coffee, so, um, but uh, her, my youngest loves espresso, he's very into, um, you know, pulling his own shots, he's, that's just kind of, he has become a little bit passionate about it, so he loves a well-done espresso <laughs> martini, and he has told me, Though he always looks to see their ingredients because apparently there are some people that are some places that make them that don't really use espresso, which defeats the purpose. So I'm not really sure about that, but lovely. So hubs, this you can sip on because I know the other ones you're going to taste, but are going to be a little sweet. So do you want do you want to fill this with ice for our next one? All right. So for our next, you don't need to rinse it out. Okay. It's totally fine. <laughs> that was cute. So our next one we're going to try is the salted caramel. So I am going to do a rim on this. So I'm going to use this to get some caramel out, which will be quite difficult because of the nature of caramel. So I'm going to do this. I'm going to take my finger there. Ooh. Oh, smuckers. That is delightful. Oh, mom, you'll love this. This will be great to put on some ice cream and I'm just smearing some out on a plate because then we're going to take the rim of the of the coop and put that across that so I I think I get this with all the all the panic I've had during the stream mm. oh that's really good yummy mm -mm -mm. okay so I'm going to wait because I know it'll tend to droop a little bit I'm going to do this at, no, I'm not going to do it at the end because then I'm going to want to pour. So I'm going to try this. I've never done it this way. So I'm just going to take the rim and kind of put it around the edge. I'm trying to be a little bit even as best I can. I feel like I'm making a royal mess, but I don't think it's supposed to be perfect. Like you see on, if you go to the website or from the, um, content creator everyday cocktails that made this their caramel rim is not even it's all meant it's all about the flavor not about it looking perfect there we go okay this is really good it is really good i don't see i, I could, see i see why maddie likes it don't know if i could drink more than one of those just no. because they're sweet but well not only the sweet just with the, you know it also has espresso okay right. so there's my salted caramel rim and again, it's just supposed to look the way it's supposed to look. We'll put this aside. About 30 minutes, we're going to be like running around the, the <laughs> city. Our bodies aren't going to know what to do with the, and then we're just the espresso <laughs> we're and then be, the alcohol. Okay, so in here, we are putting one shot of espresso. So let me get that. One shot. I'm going to put that there. Okay. One shot of a spread. Oh, I'm going to put that in last because that's the warm stuff. Um, I'm going to use this. Okay. One shot of caramel. That's a lot of caramel. Oh, my goodness. How really? A whole ounce of caramel? Oh, God. Don't put a whole ounce. I'm not going to put a car I'm going to make an executive decision. I'm not putting a whole ounce of caramel because that's just, I think, going to be more sweet. And I can't put it in first because I want to seize up. So I'm going to put in my vodka, two ounces. And this one has a considerable amount of weight to it. So two ounces of vodka. Oh, good. <laughs> so there's one. Yeah, proven that. Proven you that. prove of that one? Two. Okay. Again, this I just think is great for a brunch, though. One ounce of Kahlua. Oh, no. We have no, more. No, no, no. It's fine. It's fine. I've got, after this one, I'm bringing you all over to see what, what our little creation looks like. No, no, looks it looks like. fine. It's I'm just, just saying, I'm bringing them all over. Oh, I don't want that yet. Whoops. Because you got to remember, most of that's just a... Uh, 
Yeah, yeah. He's Stop trying. To he's trying bread. now to manage me. It's kind. Of, we're gonna. Have, <laughs> we're, it's gonna be like French toast too. Oh, okay. You know? Yep. I'm just not gonna think about that yet. All right. I'm gonna put. Just. I'm gonna put a nice spoonful in. Okay. And I'm gonna put in our espresso. Hope your hands are clean. Okay. They are clean. God knows where they've been. Oh my goodness. You're terrible. Huh. Mm. I licked my other finger the last time. All right, and we're gonna shake her up. Oh, <laughs> by the way, this is why I was gonna wait. Look at the drippage, but that's how it would look. I mean, that's what would happen. All right, so one second, I just need this, because like that is, I wasn't expecting it to drip quite so much, I'm not gonna lie. I'm gonna manage this just a little bit. Some of my biggest drips, I'm just gonna tidy up a bit. Cool that way. All right, he, <laughs> hubs approve. Oh my goodness, all right. Let's see how this turns out. go salted caramel espresso martini and it's starting to separate let me show you oh yeah there you go you see espresso espresso wait salted caramel espresso martini let me go take a picture you go entertain our guests oh wait i turned the camera off i'm sorry you can... i have i can do it i'm i can do it I want to, do you want me to take the, um, your camera over and show people nope, that? No, I, mean, I actually want the pleasure. <clears throat> the French toast. I want the pleasure of that, to be honest. It's like, it's like combination of a, a French toast and like an egg sandwich. It's going to be tasty. Okay, you ready to taste this? Speaking of tasty. Yes. So this is the salted caramel one. Ooh, it's actually not as sweet as I thought it would be, meaning it, it, and I didn't probably it's put because of the vodka. Well, I'm sure I didn't put an ounce of um, caramel in either. Just trying to get some of this caramel. caramel in We've my got beard. caramel everywhere. So I'm not gonna lie. I probably wouldn't rim the cup. It just is kind of a royal mess. Um, it's a great idea, but it's a little bit of a nuisance, don't you think? It's like you know what? It's actually got less coffee taste because of the extra vodka. Oh, that's interesting. Yeah, Which this, is probably why is, Matt likes the original. This is like. I mean, this, this one coffee has yeah. hardcore coffee espresso taste Absolutely. to it. Absolutely. All right, so let me show you where our quiche is at right now, friends. <laughs> and I'm going to check the chat because I've been ignoring y'all, and I apologize for about that. Okay, so <laughs> look at look at our bread puff going on there. Let me just just get a quick open so you can just get a chance to see this. Oh, there we go. Look at that. Look at that interestingness. So that looks fine, but definitely not cooked yet. So I think we actually are going to need that time, babe. You know. Well, we can. No, we'll definitely adjust. We can turn it back. All right. So let me see here. Get y'all back. Let's see what we're missing on the chat. Yeah, I, I kind of. Um... So could you get me a new coupe? I'm going to pour this in a new coupe. I would prefer not to have the caramel. Marcy, welcome. So glad you stopped in the chat. Thanks for joining the live stream. I appreciate it. I need to get some, wait, what did, thank you. Here, I'll do this real quick. Mm, Let me catch good. up on the chat. Okay, yeah, this is much better. <laughs> so y'all, if you like just having to work on the sticky caramel, then definitely do it, but it's kind of for me. Oh, Archie said, what's your temp, Phil? Oven temp. 375. 375. And speaking of which, I'm going to actually up it and put on my convection oven. That's what I'm going to do. <laughs> Archie said I'm the biggest drip in the room. Ah! <laughs> All right. So um, let me just catch up here. So, so, yeah, I will have to say, Eugenia, it's not as sweet as you would think. And I, I think, I agree with Hubs, I think it's the doubling of the vodka that actually takes away some of the sweetness. Um, and Archie did recommend that if you need to speak, you should put up your hand. 
like in my classroom. That's what they do in my classroom. You know, you it's, know what's, it's all, oh, you have a big thing of water there. You know what's interesting? I think this one is actually sweeter than that. Just Let's taste see. them both. Now we put less salted caramel in this. Why now? So that would have done it, but just, just taste them both. Okay. I agree, I couldn't have more think. than one of these. This is like, they're, they're just as a richness about them. It's definitely sweeter. Yeah. Right? Isn't that funny? It's the vodka. This is definitely sweeter. So the, the equal ratio provide so Eugenia, the equal ratio made a sweeter drink. Now, we did not put as much salted caramel as they recommended, but we put a decent amount in there. Um, this comes off less sweet. And it's, I actually think I like that one better. Really? Yeah. Interesting. Okay. So you heard it from here. Um, they, they do have, I'm going to put it. They do have a richness. The middle wasn't even near set, so that was the problem. Um, they do have a richness about them that is palpable. Like it's, I just, I definitely don't think I could have more than one. Yeah, but and, we're gonna have like three. Well, so yeah, we might not drink all of them. We don't have to drink them all, sweetie, just because we make them. Yeah, well, that's easier said than done in his world. Okay, un so friends, <laughs> unacceptable. So the last one involves Bailey's, and Bailey's is a great one to have. And by the way, I actually have a salted caramel Bailey's um, that is my favorite sipper, right? Archie said try 400 to finish. Oh, okay. I agree with that. <laughs> oh, wait, did you all just laugh at Hubs saying, I agree with that, <laughs> Archie, good advice. But did you all just laugh at Hubs, the kitchen... The kitchen um, pro saying it's, he agrees it's with that. It's still at 375. Because it's convection. Oh. Convection 375 means 400. It was at, it was at 350. See, our ex expert here um, needs to catch up on some of the kitchen lingo. No, I'm just giving you a hard time, babe. It is funny, though, because, you know, in the kitchen when he says that's definitely what we should do, I just have to chuckle. But back to... Um, <laughs> Back to what we were talking about. I know he may or may not be um, showing me an inappropriate finger signal right now. <laughs> Double bird. Double bird. Go birds. Go birds. <laughs> <laughs> oh, and by the way, it took us both a lot not to wear eagle stuff. I actually was the one that just said, I'm going to look pretty for my brunch stream. Um, so that's why I kind of got a little dressed up. But it is an Eagles game, and it's actually a nerve-wracking Eagles game because they're playing a really strong opponent. Who is it? 49ers. 49ers. Excuse me. Who is it? 49ers. And um, Hubs is definitely not looking forward to the game because he will be extremely stressed out. So well, we're probably, hoping the espresso. might be asleep. So after we're hoping this. the espresso will actually wear off. The alcohol, not so much, but the espresso, because the espresso will only like make him more anxious and irritated. Um, but uh, no, I lost my train of thought. Let me just go in the chat real quick. So he says. Um, so, anyways, thank you, Archie, for the advice about hubs. Though you should raise your hand. Um, wait, I'll, I'll, I'm getting off. Uh, let's see here. Um, Let's see, instant espresso. Oh, so Eugenia says, I need to get some instant espresso to make a batch of clue. Yes, I would, Eugenia, I would definitely try with instant espresso. I use, I, ha I always have instant espresso because I use it in so many recipes. It is a great, it makes excellent brownies um, to, um, with whatever liquid is required to add espresso to that to give it flavor. It makes great brownies. So that's one of my biggest tips. Um, and Marcy, again, so glad you joined us. Uh, so yeah, so it's interesting how this one wasn't um, the sweetest. And yes, Marcy, I'm glad you said happy holidays. Happy holidays to everybody. I love it. Um, and, and Archie says, Bill, keep hubs away from the oven controls. I can see trouble. Absolutely. Um, and, and Eugenia says, she's with you. She goes, she says, um, now, no, no pouring booze down the drain. Yeah, absolutely. <laughs> Oh my gosh, this is a wonderful. And Eugenia says, go Eagles, I'm rooting against the 40 winers. I love that. Did you catch it? 40 winers. 40 winers, Eugenia. That's what we're gonna be talking about when we are watching them tonight. We'll, talk to, we'll consider them as the 40 winers. All right, so now we're back. We're gonna make our last they're really, one. They're really good though. And would you mind, oh, so this is why it wasn't so sweet. I need y'all to see this. <laughs> Can y'all see that? 
Can you all see what's at the yeah, bottom of that? Can That's you see it? You're gonna shake Look it. there. Can you see it in the way I'm holding it? No. Okay. So at the bottom of this is the hunk of salted caramel that I drizzled in there. So it has not moved. So we do need um, a, here, here's a spatula. No, 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 no. This is actually going to, okay. Why can't I just use this? Because this would work better. No, it won't. It would. You want that? It would get up. No, I don't want to eat that. Thank you. I love when he doesn't take my advice. All right, let me check and see how this guy looks before I make the last one. Uh, I'm gonna. Well, so now, I'm gonna let now, it stay one more know, minute. Now we know why it didn't. It wasn't sweet. Okay, one more minute, and then we'll take her out and let her sit. Um, so now finish. we know why it wasn't that sweet. So my takeaway from that is. I don't even know if you need the salt to caramel. Well, the only thing I is... Mean, there were some that, that so, made it through. Yeah, so, but the, the thing, you know, the, what you could do... Um, wait a second. What you could do, I'm just thinking, okay. is you... Shoot. Because now this... I, so this is a great caramel sauce, yeah. but it might be too thick. So yeah, I would, I would can use, I share the caramel sauce I was going yeah. to use? And I think it's Smucker's, but... That's what, what we should have But used. what I'm laughing about about this, friends, is it's really not even caramel. Like, I look at this. I got this for something. Oh, I think one of, there's a um, coffee, a shaken coffee thing that he really likes, that Matt likes. So this, if you notice, they say Sunday syrup. It's actually, and then caramel is really referring to the flavor. <laughs> not that there's any true caramel in this, but I actually but it's, think. But it's much more liquid. Yeah, I actually think that this would, um, and I'll take, take her out in a minute. I actually think that this would actually dissolve better. So, so our takeaway is this was a good idea and thought, but not in action. I would not use something as fancy as this. I think this is much more thin and would actually dissolve. And then you add the pinch of salt. So I, some, at some point, sweetie, I would yes. love to make this again, because I would like to have that salty note come out, you know? So I feel like we didn't really get a good chance at that. Uh. So you, um, so I'm not sure if it's your mom or your dad said Maybe mom. put in put in the express uh, to oh, melt caramel sauce. Oh, that's a good idea. Put it in. Go, mom. That's a great idea. Put the caramel in the espresso. Yes. That'll cool it off and melt it. That's a great idea. We will try that next time. We'll actually try both ways and see. That's a great idea, mom. Thank you for that. Wait a I minute. Love that. Hold on. Eugenia is a lifelong Steelers fan. Wow. Oh, I will say um, because. No, that's. A, but she's yeah, rooting well, against the. No, I know. But but Eugenia, by the way, now I say this with a little trepidation. Um, but uh, but I went to Miami University, and what's his name? Roth Roethlisberger was yep. a Miami grad. And by the way, Miami just won the MAC championship last night. Yes, they did. They beat they Toledo. Did. They beat Toledo. They beat Toledo. So. Go Red Hawks. All righty. Um, all right. So we are ready for this. We need, we have our glass. Can we put this back in the fridge? Yeah. I would save the fancy stuff for ice cream. Yep. Agreed. Yeah. All right. And you all have seen, I think I've had a total of four sips and I can oh, feel come it. come on. I know. I'm just a lightweight. Oh, and I got to take this out of the oven. Can't forget. Okay. This one's good to go. I got to show you all this. Wait, wait. <laughs> This, I'm sorry, is a bit comical. Oh, it's beautiful, though. I'm not going to, wait, wait. So, friends, look at my, <laughs> wait, move. Look at my delicious quiche. Notice the bread, the bread that we get to snack on at the bottom. <laughs> there we go. Hash brown awesome. quiche. But I will say, I do love the crust looking lovely. So, we're going to let this cool. And honestly, cool. that was a great idea by Archie with the bread. Oh, absolutely. Archie. You have been a lifesaver more than once, so thank you, my friend. Um, so yeah, so we're gonna let this that is gonna be sit. Such a brutal thing. We're gonna to let try that to clean sit up. for ten minutes. We are going to set a timer. Okay. Hubs, I think, might disappear because he's so hungry, and um, I'm hungry as well. I had a little bit of a snack when he was working out, and but that is also why I'm so lightweight because I have not had much to eat today. So. For our flat white, we are using espresso. This is from Bailey's Original, um, the flat white espresso. Now, they have a couple different 
espresso martinis using Baileys. I'm doing the one that's called the flat white espresso. And in that, we are going to be using two ounces of Baileys. And I don't even know if I have two ounces in here. I might have to get into my salted caramel Baileys. So let's see. Oh, I do. Just enough. Two. Oh, Baileys is so good. I mean, is Baileys not good? Mom, do you remember the time that we mixed Baileys with ice cubes in a blender and just made a Baileys milkshake? That made my mom very happy. That is absolutely delicious. Totally recommend that um, if you want a boozy milkshake. It's absolutely delicious. All right, then we're going to do one ounce of vodka. We can do that again when they come up. I know. Wow, so there's two caramel, ounces though. of Baileys and only one ounce of mm -hmm. vodka. One, this one will be sweeter. And one ounce of espresso. I, okay, that is. There you go. Oh, that's exactly one ounce. All right, let's mix her up. Okay, let's get this one shaken. It smells so good in here, by the way. Okay, here we go. This is the flat white. Oh, oh. so I'm going to let that drip because it's a little bit lower, which is fine. Every bit out. It's really still coming. Yeah, we gotta move it. You gotta move gotta the move ice it a around. Yeah, there you go. It's amazing how the liquid like keeps well, coming. That's because the ice stuck. The ice is stuck. Okay. So, there you go. He's so smart sometimes. See now with this, I trust his advice. Right, friends? We trust him in the cocktail arena. All right. Wow. Let's show you this. This is the flat white espresso martini. So you can tell it's starting to separate, but it will be different colors. Like this is a lighter and the foam. So let me go get, I'm gonna just get a picture of that. And do your song and dance, my friend. I don't have, uh, let me read some of what's going on. All right. <clears throat> oh, it's beautiful. What a beautiful cocktail. So Eugenia said, maybe next time use more hash browns. That could be. Yeah, totally. Make the crust thicker. Yeah, totally. Absolutely. You ready? This looks so, so gorgeous. Um, <clears throat> <clears throat> I'm sorry. All right, I'm gonna taste this one. Now this is dessert. This is total dessert. This, this would be good at the end of brunch. Or if you had a sweet craving, like I'm a salty girl at brunch. I like to have the eggs, like the salty stuff. I don't get French toast. Not that I don't like it, I love it, but I want the salty hit. Your mom would actually like this. She'll taste the coffee. Mom does not mm. like coffee. I think she'll still taste the coffee. Point. Yeah. yeah for a point. Yeah. I'd rather make her a milkshake with um, the it's, salted caramel. It's That'd good. Be really good. It's just it's it's sweet. So yeah. Eugenia, this is sweet. To me, this is a dessert one. Yeah. Like it this is. It's more of a be, dessert. So uh, if I, because we do have decaf espresso pods, like that would be a nice fancy dessert. Like yep. that would be kind of nice because sometimes I don't feel like, you know, digging into something filling. And so this to me would be a great dessert. Awesome. Agreed. And I bet if we mix them all together, they'd be, good. <laughs> they'd be good too. Maybe that's what we should do to balance them all. Wow. So three, look what Hubs has done already. My oh, goodness. Come on. You, you had some of that too. <laughs> Okay. <laughs> Which one's that? You don't even know, do you? Um, I don't know. I think that's the original. <laughs> well, let me try. No, that's the original because yeah, it's sweeter. That's so funny. Yeah. But that's because the caramel didn't. Well, didn't but some of the caramel came through. Very little. No, no, no. I you think. can taste. You can taste caramel. I in this, don't but... know. I don't know. I think very little came through. All right. So, friends, let's just first talk about our recommendations because I always want to give you recommendations based on these espresso martinis. You, why is this not going? Because it's the wrong one. Oh. So, based on our, I, I love. I do like the original. I think it's super delicious. And I, what I like about the original is I feel like. You could absolutely play around with it. You could try different liqueurs. I just think, I just think it's it's just it's very nice. Like it's a it's a great 
It's a great, especially for a brunch, I think it makes a great offering and it's, it's really easy to do. Um, the salted caramel, I feel like we don't truly have a sense because we had a bit of a caramel. So what was, your, what was your favorite one? Well, based on how it turned out, the caramel one, yeah, too, only huh? because I don't think it had enough of the caramel dilute, so it was less sweet. But you could play around with that with the original. You could right. use Kales Kahlua. Yeah, well, yes, correct. You could, or more, he would be more like, vodka. no, more vodka. Yeah. <laughs> I would just use less Kahlua. But, but um, I think this would be great. Oh, for dessert. For dessert, because it's this really tasty. This is very easy to drink. I mean, it's Bailey's. And after having this, I would totally do the salted caramel Bailey's. That would be delicious. Wow, that's good. That really is good. Mm. I think, you know what I think? Because I do like having, um, you know, sometimes a shot of Bailey's. Like in the summer, a shot of um, chilled limoncello, just as my dessert. Um, in the wintertime, it would be Bailey's. I think that would make, with the decaf espresso pods, I think that would make a great dessert for wifey with the salted caramel Baileys. That's what I would do, the salted caramel Baileys. And I think we'll make a video of that. I'm gonna do a short with that, friends, um, or real in Instagram terms. I'm gonna do um, salted caramel Baileys, vodka, and decaf because, because I'm of that age. I can't have that at night or well, I'm not gonna sleep. Yeah, right. So that was delicious. And let me see how much time we've left. Okay, we're almost there too. So let's tidy up so we can give so, it star attention. Okay. No, talk, go no, ahead. No. Talk, talk, talk. I would. Just, yeah, what's your favorite? I didn't ask you. I'm sorry. So it was the caramel one, actually. Um, but again, they were they were all good. I, I just would I would tweak the first one. Okay, that's fair. I would do a little bit more vodka and a little less Kahlua. All right, so I'm going to bring our star attraction because one of the things we do need to do is we <laughs> we somehow need to unveil this thing out of the which this is. Oh, friends, if you've stuck around with us till now, you get the good stuff because we've <laughs> got to get this out of the spring form pan somehow and the bread that's stuck underneath. So we're going to give you some more good content. So first of all, before I embellish, and let me just show you the fancy part of Phil. I brought out my like lovely little cake topper for my quiche. Hopefully we can get it out of the pan. I'm going to get a little spatula it will help loosen it on the edges. Oh, and I forgot to tell you, you do grease um, your springform pan. What I did was I, instead of using spray, I actually used butter. Cause I'm like, you know what? I'm going to get the butter out and do that. So let me first just loosen it. So I'm taking one of these lit. I love this. This is a great little spatula. I'm just loosening the side. Okay. And it's stuck, even though I greased it, there's definitely some stickage because it is potatoes. And we all know in the foodie community that besides eggs, potatoes are also a very sticky ingredient. Like they cling to everything. God, it smells good. It does smell good. So I'm just loosening the edges. I'm going to run it again, just to make sure. Extra insurance. Should there I get the go. syrup out for the French toast in the set? <laughs> I'm gonna, I'm, I still don't know if he's going to get any quiche, friends. I don't know. Should he get quiche? And then what's great about the spring form, I'll show you, is you, what should happen is you should release, wait a second, <laughs> it's stuck to the bottom, which is not a surprise. I expected it to be stuck to the bottom. I need to do this first. <laughs> oh, this is such an adventure today, friends. Okay, let's see. All right. So with the spring form, what's nice is you release this and then you should be able to lift it. You should. But we have a lot of like drama going on underneath. So I'm going to use this to help me hopefully. It's kind of coming. It's kind of coming. There it goes. There we go. There you go. Wait, there's a little stickage. Wow. Look at that. That's awesome. This is going to be fun to clean, friends. Look at that. Yeah, that's my job. I'll take Yikes. a little piece just to see. Okay. Oh, it's kind of souffle. Mm. It's like strata. Oh. You, you pick on that, friend. Woo! Now, what's really fun is, do you see this going on? There's more strata for you, babe. Um, it's the maple so, syrup. So, what... When I saw hers, oh, I know what she does. I think, 
I think she actually puts this back in the oven and gets this crisp, but we're just not going to do that because we're ready to eat. Can you turn off the timer? So I'm going to leave it on this disc here because I think she did do that. Yeah, that um, would make sense. Can you throw that away from me? Oh, no, man. It's a little hot. Or you can just put it over there, though, so it's not like in the camera shot. <laughs> it's a little embarrassing. All right. So I'm going to put this on there because I'm afraid I'm afraid I'm not going to get it off this and I've got asbestos hand so I'm just going to lift all right and so that we'll just put here you don't I don't want you to start washing just because because we're almost ready to try okay. um, all right so then what I would do to this I have a little thing I don't want there okay is I would put on here some extra parsley but gosh it is gorgeous I'm going to bring you to the to the eggs friends it is really gorgeous so I believe she does put it into the oven. I forgot the step and let it crisp up a little bit. But look how pretty that is. I mean, it really turned out quite nice. Even with all the drama. You can see the parsley. You can see the brown, the top. Like, it really did turn out quite nice. Oops, my camera moved a little bit. Okay. By the way, do you want to turn on the lights of the tree? Because I promised him I'd show them that too. I am going to just put a little bit more parsley because why not? A little freshness. And I'm going to put some fresh grated Parmesan cheese because we can. Let it rain a little bit on there. Okay, and can I have your phone because I'm going to need to get a picture of this too. It's right there. Thank you. And I'm going to also put just a little drizzle of olive oil just to make it look glossy on top. There we go. And that is... That's beautiful. Beautiful. It really is. Even without, I think, further browning the bottom, which I think they do. Look at that. That is gorgeous. So I'm going to take a picture of this. I'm going to use Hub's camera. Thank you, bud. You go entertain our folks while I get this real quick. I'll look at the, uh, the things. Mm -hmm. Gorgeous. I'm, I'm pleased. I mean, we definitely had uh, some, says some looks beautiful. difficulties, but generally I am pretty pleased with it, if I'm Mom being honest. Mom says looks fabulous. Thank you, Mom. Archie says, I want a sriracha drizzle on my Ah, hands. there you go. Or, Archie, what you could have is a, Calabri a Calabrian drizzle. Catherine says, a little jiggle, a little, I can't, I can't read that. You can't read. Little... Let me see what she said. A little jiggle, a little wanagling, wanagling. I know that word. I love your verbiage, Eugenia. And a little knife work and spatula separation. And voila. OK. So, it smells and great. I do need like a walk outside because I am just burning up <laughs> right now. Might be having a hot flash. May or may not be having a hot flash. I was just actually going to say it was cold. So. It'd be nice to be cold right now. Definitely not cold. Okay, difference. I'm going to use this to, to spoon it up, but I'm going to use actually a knife to dig in to make sure I get a good um, separation. Let me see. Which one do I want to use? What do I want to use, babe? I'm going to use my thinner one. There you go. Just don't stab me with it. I won't stab you this time. Okay. Oh. Plus, I'm trying to get down that crust without totally ruining it. Nice. Let's see. The first piece is usually the trickiest. You know, is it just me, or when you, when you cut it, it like releases the aroma even more? It does. Oh, look at this, friends. See. And the steam is coming off of it. Oh my goodness. Oh, there you go, good. babe. What you've been waiting for so patiently. I don't know if you've been patient. You actually have been pretty patient this stream. I gotta give you kudos. He has not been as impatient as he has been in other streams. So. I stole some food along Thank the way. Thank you. Oh, did you? Yeah. Am I gonna find that out later? Yeah. Yum. Oh Archie, my goodness. Archie called it out. But... Did he? <laughs> but you did not. Apparently he didn't read that, Archie, though. So he kept that little tidbit from me. All right, so let's give this a taste. Cheers. Oh, 
How is it? Mmm. It's delicious. It's perfectly done. Oh, it's hot. It is hot. I love the potato. Mmm. I wish the potato was a little more brown, so I would definitely, if I did this again, I would definitely remove the outer layer, put it back oh, in. So I would actually watch my cooking. So this is my advice, friends. Besides stopping up the hole as best you can, I would actually take it out. Like when we first started noticing it, I would have tried, because I think we could have gotten the edge, like the, um, the outer rim off and let it crisp on the outside. Especially, it won't crisp underneath, but the outside would be nice to have that crispiness. Oh, the flavor's great though. Mm -hmm. So good. Mm. Nice work. I can taste the fontina, which is delightful. I like, so in this, I like using the fontina doing the Italian way because the fontina gives it a punch. It just is a stronger cheese. Yeah. It's really good. Mm. And the pancetta gives a salty bite. Delicious. Mm. And we are hungry. Sure. Thank you. Well, thank you for helping me keep take my um, deer and headlights look off of <laughs> off of the paws and help me try to fix the problem. And thank you all for helping me fix the problem. That it's, was that was a fun one. <laughs> it takes a village, right? It takes a village. And um, prayers for hubs because this is going to be a bear to clean up. But and nothing that soaking won't help you. Wait a minute, I have to clean it up. That's his job. I cook, he cleans. Like that's what we did. But so many people to thank. Um, Barbara, Eugenia, Marcy, Mom, Archie, DS, Kathy, uh, Matthew. Um, I'm trying to think if I forgot anybody else. Uh, let me see here. If I forgot anyone else, my apologies. I think I got everybody. But thank you so much for coming into chat. And for those of you who um, didn't come into chat. Thank you for watching. Thank you for braving this, um, this hilarious stream. Um, I'm glad I was able to show you the missteps so that you might not have the missteps when you do it. Also, I did want to let you know that I have a stream coming up this week. On Wednesday, I am doing a Brown Butter Bliss stream. And Brown Butter has been everywhere this past year. What does that mean? I'm going to tell you, brown butter has been everywhere this past year, especially in baked goods, but it's been showing up. And it always has been a little bit in savory goods, but I found this recipe that uses brown butter in ricotta to make this phenomenal pasta. And it's from one of my favorite content um, creators. I think it's Cafe Haley. She is amazing. And she puts together, like you can tell she is professional in the kitchen because she just puts together phenomenal things. So I'm very excited to try that on Wednesday at 5 p.m. So don't miss it. And um, friends, thank you so much for joining. I'll miss it. You'll miss it. I know. There might not be leftovers either because I'm probably just going to make it for one. So that's okay. That's okay. But friends, thank you so much. And um, please like and subscribe. And until we eat again, bye friends. Have a great Sunday. Go birds. See ya. Go birds.